here's the dresser that I'm going to flip. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, but I wanted to redo the drawer fronts. So my inspiration for this piece was a past flip I did. I did another video of how I created these drawer fronts and I really wanted to re kind of use this design idea. So I had a little Photoshop fun of the drawer fronts and kind of put this pattern together. Now I'll walk you step by step of how to put this pattern on the drawer fronts with not much math. For this pattern, we're going to look at the top two drawers since the bottom two are basically a reflection of the top two. So you want to find your middle point and draw a line down your dresser. And then what I go ahead and do is I take my trim pieces and then I evenly space them out until I get to that middle point of the drawer. Once you figure out the number of trim pieces that go across to that middle point, then you can kind of start figuring out your pattern. So I always start from one side. Um, I knew at the top of the pattern I wanted it to be straight and then it's gonna flow down into the second drawer. So I had four and then I made a gap out of one of the spaces and one of the trim pieces for my handles to go. The next section of the design was a little bit of a puzzle for me. So I knew I wanted two of them just to kind of go across and then the next section of the pattern to come back into it. Um, so you're gonna wanna start at that top edge and then you can just um, figure out the gap. And then I knew with the spacing and the size of my trim that it would work out. Um, you're gonna wanna definitely use a 45 angle because that's gonna help you figure out your lines and how many can go across. So I knew I wanted a straight one right next to the middle and then I took my 45 just to figure out with my spacing how many across I could do. So I think it ended up to be six. I was really hoping for seven, but seven just kind of went too much into that pattern and didn't line up. So then you kind of just kind of go down with each of those vertical lines all the way to your 45 and that's also gonna be your 45 cut. I'll show you later in the video how I do this with no math and then you kind of come back across up until that line using that gap so then it kind of flows into it but you have a little bit of spacing in between. Once you figured out this section of the pattern, um, it's all gonna be 45 cuts. It's just gonna be a reflection. So you're gonna do the same thing, just reverse. You're gonna have your four lines and then your two going back towards the middle and then your other middle section six are gonna be facing outward. So it's just the same cuts. Once you have one section of that top drawer, it's gonna be the same but reversed for the other side and same for your bottom drawer. So I usually go through and I number, which you'll see on some of my stuff, um, just so I can keep track of the cuts and then I'm gonna show you guys later in this section of the video why I number because you can reuse the same cuts where you're not having to go back through and kind of re figure it all out. And don't worry, my drawing is not the best just because I was trying to do it real quick just to show you guys. Um, so I was just trying to show the gaps here. Um, the dotted lines are just my kind of midpoint of where I was gonna draw. And that's my stopping point for the lines just so you guys have it as a reference. Now that you figured out the top part of the pattern, we're gonna work on the next section of the drawer. I knew that I wanted the side sections to be a little bit different and kind of come out. So you work off the same spacing with your trim and what you did above, and then you kind of bring that down. So I numbered these all because the ones that are going vertical, you're actually gonna reuse it because my drawer was the same height from the bottom to the top. So that one is gonna be at a 45, and then I just kind of went across from there that's why I numbered them one, two, three, four, five, six. So the, the first one was one, 
I'm on three right now and then four goes across. So that's kind of how I did that. And then I figured out that horizontal piece, which was super simple. As you can see, that top four flows right into that next four of the second drawer. So now we're gonna look at the next two. Once you have your gap, it's all gonna be the same. And then you're just kind of reverse and reflect those two above. So then for the middle section, it's basically a reflection of what we just did above. I always make sure I kind of know where my midpoint is, but most of it, it's all the same size drawer. Definitely double check all your drawers and then you just kind of flow through that pattern and just kind of go through that one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's gonna be reverse and opposite because I wanted them to kind of look a little different. So I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom with this pattern. Once you finish that section, guess what? It's an easy flip of the same pattern you just did and cut reversed on the other side. So you're gonna have those same four pieces. They're gonna actually go out the opposite way and then the others are gonna be just a flip version of what you just did. And there's your pattern. It's basically gonna be the same for the bottom two drawers, just flipped and reversed. And so then I'm gonna show you how I kind of go through and number them. So when you look at this one, that one's just gonna be the same as that one. So when you're making all your cuts, you kind of can keep track. And then I almost lay them all out and number them one, two, three, four of my drawers. And then you number your cut. So that's all gonna be the same cut. It's all the way to the top at a 45 angle on each of them, just going different directions. So just make sure when you're kind of lining up your pattern as you cut them, you can see it. And then you'll it will go really quick once you kind of get the hang of it. For the red lines, I really wanted you guys to visually see all the same cuts in the pattern and how each little section of the patterns have the same cuts. It just will make it easier when you're kind of doing it yourself. Here's my little tip for labeling the pattern. So I went one, two, three, four, and these are all the vertical lines now. And then I kind of went, the next one is a one, or a two I should say, and a one and those are the same cuts. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side. That's one, two, three, four. And they're all the same as it was on the other side. And it's just so you can visually know which cut and which section you're doing in the pattern. So down below, it's gonna be the same ones because they go all the way to the drawer. So that one's gonna be a one, that one's gonna be a two. This is just to help you guys visually see it when you're doing it yourself. Now I'm going to show you the horizontal section. So I used ABC just to kind of differentiate between the one, two, three of the vertical ones. So those are all going to be the same cuts. Just label your first one that you do and then you can kind of figure out, okay, I've got to make so many of these cuts. I think it was in total, it was like 16 different sections of the pattern, but it goes quick once you have your template of that middle section. So just label them. And then the same is gonna be said for those others that come out on the edge of the drawer. Again, so my ABC, it's just gonna be all the same cuts, just a little reverse because my trim has a bevel. I could only use one side. If you use something flat, all your cuts are gonna be the same, which makes it a little bit easier. I really do highly recommend labeling your pattern, at least the first two sections, just because it does help so much when you're looking at your cuts. 
and there you go there's your pattern and you just flip it and reverse it and put it on the bottom two drawers This was the trim that I used on my drawer fronts. Like I said, there's a little bit of a bevel, so you can't use the bottom side because it's flat. I love this trim. It's called Pine Screen Mold. You can get it at Home Depot, and I think it's the cheapest trim you can find there. This is my saw setup. It is an old saw, but you can also use a miter box and handsaw, but it will take you a lot longer, and all the cuts are just gonna be 45 and zero. This is my no measure trick of how to get everything to line up. My first cut will always be the longest, so you're gonna use that long edge and then that 45 cut and that very tip corner is gonna go all the way to the edge of the drawer. I always use another kind of piece as a reference just to make sure that line that's gonna go come across at that 45 is gonna be flush with the edge. And then you just use your spacing and then you can mark off the bottom where the straight line is where it's gonna to come to the edge of the drawer. This is probably the easiest way I figured out how to do it instead of worrying about measurements and all that. Just get a 45 and then slowly work your way. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And this is how I make the cuts. So the one on the right side is the pre-cut. The one on the left is the one that I'm trying to cut to be the next one in the pattern. So I kinda of all hold it there with using my um, spacer in the middle. And then I just kind of go from the edge of the drawer, make sure that one's lined up, and then you just draw a line, and then that's where your cut is. I get lots of questions of how I attach the wood pieces to the drawer fronts. This is my current setup. I use a brad nailer. It's an 18 gauge. I really like the smaller size brad nails for it. I always go with 5 8 but check your drawer with your piece of trim just to make sure it doesn't go through. My brad nailer is then hooked up to this six gallon air compressor. It's actually my father-in-law's, which has turned into mine, but you can get it at Home Depot. And there you go. Let's get the pattern onto the drawer fronts. When you're attaching your pattern, I always pick an edge. So usually you pick left or right, and then you work off that edge, because then all your spacing's gonna line up. For this pattern, you wanna work off both sides and come into the middle, because even if there's a little, um, space or an extra space, it'll kind of all line up on each side. As you can see too, I'm working in those vertical lines and attaching them and then I'll go back through and add the horizontal. And there you go. There's your completed pattern on your drawer fronts. Now let's finish it. This is what I use to fill the holes. I use just a plain old all purpose wood filler. And then I have this thing called, it's a nail set and a hammer. And so you basically set that over some of the nails that are sticking up a little bit above the wood and you just tap it in. I then put a little bit of that wood filler on my finger and then I just go ahead and fill all the nail holes. And then I also go ahead and fill where the joints are just because if there's any unevenness when I'm sanding, it just gives that really smooth look. let this dry for a couple hours read the label and see what they recommend and then I would give it a little extra this stuff it actually color changes so you know it's dry but I usually let it go a little bit longer before I start sanding this is what I use to sand I use an orbital sander I also use a mouse sander and this is great for the drawer fronts and then just a simple sanding block just to really get in the grooves
When I sand the drawer fronts, I always start with my mouth sander. It's the best. It kind of works in some of those groups and really gets those big chunks of the wood filler out. And then I go back with the um, sanding block just to kind of get the fine edges and in between. Also make sure you sand all the edges and sides of the drawer. That'll give that really nice smooth finish. For the body of the piece, I use my orbital sander. Um, you just wanna give it a really good scuff sand. This will help the paint adhere to the piece better. Now it's time to paint. Here's what I used when I painted my piece. I just used a primer paint that you can find at Home Depot and then Melange Sentinel Gray was the color I put on the piece. And here are the brushes I used. So I just used a zebra brush. I do recommend the round brush. It's great for the detail work. And then the flat brush just to do the body of the piece. For applying the primer, I used the chisel brush by Zebra. It really helps get in the nook and crannies. I kind of globbed it on because I wanted a really good heavy coverage. Um, when you're using your mineral paint, you can sometimes have bleed through and then you gotta do a lot of extra coats. So um, most times I do use a primer just to kind of help with that. And it'll kind of keep the cost down where you don't need as much of that mineral paint. So again, you're just gonna wanna glob it on and really work it into all those cracks. Once your primer is dry, then you can go ahead and apply that mineral paint, whichever color you choose. Um, for this one, I use that round brush. It actually works a little bit better to get some really smooth coverage in between the cracks. Um, for the primer, I use the chisel so I could really get that fine edge, but I really love using this round brush with all the detail work. Then you're gonna repeat this process on all the drawer fronts. I did about two coats of the mineral paint and then one coat of primer and then just account for dry time in between. For the body of the dresser, you want to use that flat brush. So with doing the primer, I just try to make sure I do some long strokes so then that kind of takes out the brush strokes. And then you just want to get a good amount of coverage on the whole piece. Once the primer's dry, then you go ahead and you add your mineral paint onto it. And again, make sure you do really long strokes. I work not too quick, but you wanna do long, light strokes on it because you're doing a large surface area. And then that'll give it that really smooth finish. This was the hardware I selected from Home Depot. This is what I used to seal the piece. I used Howdy Doody Hemp Seed Oil from Dixie Bell and a microfiber cloth that you'll apply in a circular motion. I used the chalk brush just to kind of buff it out and then the feed and wax is for the inside of the drawers because it'll make it smell really good and really bring out the natural wood inside the drawers. And there you go. There's how you get a high-end dresser on a budget.
For how great this piece turned out, I actually did submit it for the Makers Challenge. So if you follow me on social media, on Instagram and TikTok, um, I submitted it and I actually got runner up, which is super exciting because it's my first challenge I've ever done. Thanks for watching. Click below to subscribe for more redesign ideas and tips.